What's Brewing in America? A Young Patriot's Guide to the Tea Party. Amy Thompson Hale and Sheila Coffin Harshman. It's cool. Welcome to our animated book of What's Brewing in America. Enjoy. Have fun. Narrated by Edward J. Harshman, M.D. Friends, brethren, countrymen, that worst of plagues, the detested tea shipped for this port by the East India Company, is now arrived in the harbor, the hour of destruction or manly opposition to the machinations of tyranny stares you in the face. A handbill posted on the Liberty Tree and all over Boston, November 29, 1773. What's Brewing in America? A Young Patriot's Guide to the Tea Party, Past and Present. Star Spangled Dragon Studios, copyright July 4th, 2011. Amy Thompson Hale, Sheila Coffin Harshman. Disclaimer The people shown in this movie book may not consider themselves Tea Party people. We are not saying that they are. We are saying that some of them behave heroically, which is one of the things Tea Party people do. Thank you for the things you do. Table of Contents One, the Colonists. Two, King George, Parliament, and Taxes. Three, the Boston Tea Party. Four, Revenge. Five, the War, the Declaration, and the Bill of Rights. Six, the New Tea Party. Seven, the Tea Party Continues. Eleanor, Dartmouth, Beaver. Well, ho! Um, this is not Moby Dick. Welcome to our Tea Party book. Chapter 1, The Colonists. There were three main areas in colonial America. The New England colonies, the Middle colonies, and the Southern colonies. A fourth area, known as the Back Country, was considered nothing but swampland. Very few towns had a schoolhouse. Most children were schooled at home. Colonists got around mostly by walking. Some also used horses, sleds, wagons, and boats. Conestoga wagons were good for long-distance traveling because they were like a house on wheels. Laziness was considered a sin. New England colonies, Massachusetts, which included Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Middle colonies, the breadbasket colonies, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and New Jersey. Southern colonies, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The people who lived in America in the 1700s were called colonists. There were very few stores, so most colonists had to do everything for themselves including growing their own vegetables, building their own houses, hunting for their own meat, and making their own clothes. No, stop! The colonists worked very hard and became good at taking care of themselves. The thirteen original colonies, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, New York, Delaware, Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Chapter 2 King George, Parliament, and Taxes
King George III ruled Great Britain from 1760 to 1820. Britain had huge debts in 1763 from fighting the French. In order to solve the problem, he began taxing the colonists in America to get the needed money. Britain also issued a royal proclamation to keep the colonists from moving west beyond the Appalachian Mountains. This enraged many merchants and farmers. In order to pay the debts, the British Parliament passed the Sugar Act of 1764 to tax raw sugar, molasses, silk, and wine. The Stamp Act of 1765 required a revenue stamp on all printed materials including newspapers, posters, legal documents, and playing cards. It was repealed in 1766 after the colonists refused to buy anything else from Britain. The Townshend Acts were a series of taxes on certain products such as paint, paper, glass, lead, and tea. The Tea Act especially taxed tea. To keep from buying cloth from Britain, the Daughters of Liberty began to spin their own cloth. Wearing these homespun clothes was a symbol of patriotism. America was a British colony and King George III of Great Britain ruled over the colonies. The King of England wanted more money from the colonists, so he kept adding more taxes. Sugar Act, 1764, Stamp Act, 1765, Townshend Acts, 1767, Tea Act, 1773. King George taxed everything he could. Britain, 1776, Parliament, the Legislature of Britain. Legislature, a group of people elected to make changes in the laws of a country or state. In 1773, the colonists were very upset because they were being taxed without any representation in Britain's Parliament. They decided to do something about it. Special thanks to Sarah Harshman for all of these historically accurate curls. The colonists thought that things were not fair and wanted to send someone to Britain to stand up for them in the Parliament. No! But the king said no. Treason betrayal of country, a violation of loyalty by aiding an enemy. Chapter 3, The Boston Tea Party The Liberty Tree, 1646 through 1775, was a famous elm tree that stood on the commons of Boston, Massachusetts colony before the American Revolution. The tree was a rallying point for the growing resistance. Almost every American town had its own liberty tree, a living symbol of popular support for individual liberty and resistance to tyranny. Tyranny means unreasonable and severe power forced on the people by a government or single ruler. The liberty tree in Boston was the largest elm tree that stood in Hanover Square at the corner of Orange and Essex Streets. It received the name of Liberty Tree because the Sons of Liberty held their meetings under it during the summer of 1765. The ground under the tree was called Liberty Hall. After the repeal of the Stamp Act and the Boston Tea Party, the British cut down the Liberty Tree. Thus, it became a symbol for the colonists. Some of the men in the colonies started having secret meetings to decide what to do about the taxes and the king. This group was known as the Sons of Liberty. 
Liberty, freedom from control by the government, freedom to choose. They met in secret in places like the Green Dragon Tavern. Boston Tea Party. On December 16, 1773, 116 colonists disguised themselves as Indians and threw tea into the water of the Boston Harbor in Massachusetts. Griffin's Wharf is where the Boston Tea Party took place. This destroyed the tea and taxes could not be collected. This tea is heavy. Whose bright idea was this? Oh, my back! Each chest of tea weighed 400 pounds. There were three ships with tea in Boston Harbor that night, the Beaver, the Eleanor, and the Dartmouth. The colonists threw 342 chests of tea into the harbor. This sign on the Pacific Club is in Nantucket, Massachusetts. The Pacific Club, known as the Captain's Rooms, the original members were captains of the whaling fleet at the Pacific Ocean. This building was the counting house of William Roch, owner of the ships Dartmouth, Beaver, Eleanor of the Boston Tea Party. The Beaver was the first whaler to round Cape Horn also owner of the Bedford, first vessel to fly the Stars and Stripes in British waters in 1785. This event was known as the Boston Tea Party. The Pacific Club, home of the Tea Party ships, is in Nantucket, Massachusetts. It took the colonists three hours from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. to get all of the tea off of the ships. This flag flies above the Pacific Club, home of the Tea Party ships in Nantucket, Massachusetts. Chapter 4 Revenge In 1774, the British Parliament passed five new laws which were meant to punish the Massachusetts colony for the Boston Tea Party. The colonists called these laws intolerable acts. 1. The Boston Port Act, which closed the port of Boston until the Bostonians paid for the tea they had tossed into the harbor. 2. Any officer or soldier in the British government who was arrested for murder could be sent to Great Britain for trial. Three. The Massachusetts Government Act took away the right to have town meetings and self-govern. This changed the Massachusetts Charter. 4. The Quartering Act forced colonists to house and feed soldiers in their own homes. 5. The last act, called the Quebec Act, extended the boundaries of the Quebec province southward to the Ohio River and gave the freedom to worship to Roman Catholics. These laws acted as a uniting force in all 13 colonies, not just Massachusetts, and drove them toward the Revolutionary War. After the Boston Tea Party, the British Parliament and King George III passed several laws to punish the colonists in Massachusetts. Redcoat, British soldier. The British soldiers were sometimes called lobster backs. Britain no longer allowed ships to be loaded or unloaded in Boston Harbor. Britain also passed a law called the Quartering Act, which said that Britain's troops could live in anyone's house and could even throw out the owner of the house. First Continental Congress in prayer. The colonists organized a meeting on September 5, 1774, in Philadelphia. Twelve of the thirteen colonies sent a total of 56 representatives. 
Only Georgia did not send anyone. The meeting was called the First Continental Congress. This Congress decided not to use items from Britain anymore. The Culpeper Minutemen marched with Patrick Henry and used a flag with a rattlesnake coiled and ready to strike and the phrases liberty or death and don't tread on me. British troops began arriving in America to fight the colonists. The colonists formed groups of militia known as Minutemen. They were called Minutemen because they could fire a round in a minute or less. It took most men two to three minutes. Fort Western, Augusta, Maine. Chapter 5 The War, the Declaration, and the Bill of Rights. The original Declaration of Independence was engrossed on parchment which is animal skin treated with lime and stretched to create strong, long-lasting support. There are 26 copies of the Declaration of Independence currently in existence. 21 are owned by American institutions, 2 by British institutions, and 3 by private owners. If you were a member of the Second Continental Congress of 1776, you were considered a rebel and a traitor by King George III of Great Britain. By signing these documents, these men pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor for the sake of liberty. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights are known collectively as the Charters of Freedom. The Constitution has 4,400 words and is the oldest and shortest constitution of any major government in the world. James Madison is known as the father of the Constitution. On July 4, 1776, the Second Continental Congress met and told the King that they wanted to be free from Britain and to start their own country. They signed a document called the Declaration of Independence. Special thanks to our art advisor, Alex Hale. The colonists fought a war with Britain. This war was called the Revolutionary War. The colonists won and could then be called Americans. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. In 1787, the Continental Congress met again. Every state had at least one representative, except for New Hampshire. They created a list of laws to keep the new government from getting too big, having too much control, taxing people too much, and taking away their freedom. Bill of Rights, simplified. 1. Freedom of religion, speech, press, and assembly. The right to petition the government. 2. The right to form a militia and the right to keep and bear arms. 3. The right not to have soldiers in one's home. 4. Protection against unreasonable search and seizure. 5. No one can be tried for a serious crime unless accused by a grand jury. No one can be forced to testify against himself. No one can be tried twice for the same crime. No one can be punished without due process of law. People must be paid for property taken for public use. 6. The right to have a speedy trial, the right to legal counsel, and the right to confront your accusers. 7. The right to a jury trial in most civil suits. 8. No excessive bail, stiff fines, or cruel or unusual punishment. 9. There are so many basic human rights that not all of them could be listed in the Constitution. 10. Powers not given to the federal government by the Constitution belong to the states or the people. These documents are called the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. George Washington, first American president, great leader, 
considered father of his country. Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence. Samuel Adams, leader of the Sons of Liberty, the movement that became the American Revolution. Thomas Paine, author of the highly successful pamphlet, Common Sense. James Madison, fourth American president, primary author of the Constitution, and the key author of the Bill of Rights. Chapter 6, The New Tea Party The Tea Party movement is a group of millions of Americans who share similar core values such as limited government, individual freedom, free markets, personal responsibility, returning power to the states, and returning to the principles of our Founding Fathers and the Constitution. Some people believe that TEA stands for Taxed Enough Already. The Tea Party is not a political party. Glenn Beck, a talk show host, started a group called the 912 Project at about the same time as the Tea Party movement. The core principles are similar to the Tea Party, and many Americans are members of both. On August 28, 2010, Glenn Beck ha held a Restoring Honor event at the Lincoln Memorial to pray for our nation. Over 800,000 people showed up. Over the years, the American Congress took too much power and started taking away more freedom from the American people. The American people were tired of the Congress and the President breaking the laws of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The Party of No. The people of the Tea Party felt that things had gone too far. They started telling the government no, just like the colonists did at the Tea Party in 1773. Representative Ron Paul, M.D., of Texas. Dr. Paul is a medical doctor and a congressman. One of the great men in the freedom movement is Ron Paul, M.D. One thing is clear. The Founding Fathers never intended a nation where citizens would pay nearly half of everything they earn to the government. We need to understand the more government spends, the more freedom is lost. Instead of simply debating spending levels, we ought to be debating whether the departments, agencies, and programs funded by the budget should exist at all. Let the revolution begin. Thank you, Ron Paul. For many years, Representative Ron Paul of Texas has been educating people about the freedom the government has been taking away. Rick Santelli's Tea Party Rant. The government is promoting bad behavior. President Obama, are you listening? We're thinking of having a Chicago Tea Party in July. Now all you capitalists that want to show up at Lake Michigan, I'm going to start organizing. Are you nearby? Can you hear the cheering? <laughs> Rick, they're like putty in your hands. Thank you, Rick. On February 19th, 2009, Rick Santelli stood on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and told America via live television, we're thinking of having a Chicago Tea Party in July. The United States of America. People all across America got excited and thought it was a great idea. The American people were now paying more taxes than they were during the Boston Tea Party. This was the start of the modern Tea Party. Grassroots, a local and natural movement that often starts with sincere volunteers. People of all ages, of all colors, rich people and poor people from every state of the United States decided to pick one day to tell the government to stop taking away their freedoms because the ordinary people of America are the ones who decided to speak up, this modern Tea Party is called a grassroots movement. 
the annual tax day tea party. Augusta, Maine. Yes, I am a tea party dog. Some people held tea parties in February, but on April 15, 2009, over 1,000 towns and cities held tea parties all across America. Government is the enemy of freedom. My health care, my privacy, my money, my Fourth Amendment. At what point is this treason? Socialism is un-American. Silence is surrender. You cap us, we trade you. Party like it's December 1773. You can't fix stupid. Some threw tea into the water near where they lived. Some dressed up in colonial costumes. Many people brought signs to tell the government how they felt about high taxes and about losing their freedom. At the tea parties, the people made speeches to the government, sang patriotic songs, and got to meet other Americans who felt the same way about the government taking away our God given rights. The Congress and President still kept taxing people and saying no to the people, just like King George III in 1773. The people of the Tea Party decided to have another Tea Party by marching in Washington, D.C., where the federal government is located. On September 12, 2009, over one and a half million people marched down the streets of Washington, D.C. The main route taxpayers marched was southeast on Pennsylvania Avenue, from Freedom Plaza to the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. There were so many people in the taxpayers' march on Washington that they had to use three different streets, and the whole city of Washington, D.C. was shut down for the three hours it took to march from Freedom Plaza to the Capitol Building. Great Seal of the United States the same day that America declared war on Great Britain, July 4, 1776, the committee was formed to design this seal, which is used to sign treaties and transactions with other countries. It took three years to come up with this design. Fourteen congressmen worked on it. Out of the many, one. Watched over by the great eye of providence. A new order of the ages. Some of the congressmen and senators got afraid of losing their jobs, so they started to listen to the people. A few of the faces in the liberty movement. Ron Paul, M.D. Rand Paul. Bruce Poliquin. Paul LePage. Chris Christie. Marco Rubio. Paul Ryan. Sarah Palin. Jim DeMint, Alan West, Mike Pence, Scott Walker. Disclaimer, the people shown in this book may or may not consider themselves Tea Party people. We simply feel that they have been heroic in their actions to uphold the Constitution and thank them for it. The Tea Party, by working together, began electing people who believed in the Constitution. The people of America knew the truth when they heard it, and they liked it. Ludwig von Mises, Austrian economist who stood firm to facts in the face of Maynard Keynes' crazy economics. Harry Brown, politician and author of How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. Robert Ringer, author, Restoring the American Dream. Ross Perot, businessman turned politician who captured people's imaginations with the truth. These are some of the people whose ideas still influence the Tea Party.
America is not a democracy. We are a republic. Born free, taxed to death. Government big enough to give you everything you want is a government big enough to take everything you have. Democracy is like two wolves and one lamb voting on what to have for dinner. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. Three simple words, we the people. Stimulate business, not government. Give us liberty, not debt. Chapter 7, The Tea Party Continues. The Tea Party is a group of individuals. It is not a political party, nor is it affiliated with a particular political party. It is not just about taxes. It is about government that is so big that it tells people what to do. It is about the government spending too much money. It is about making sure the government follows the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. It is about letting businesses run themselves and keeping the government out of their way so they can prosper. It is about taking responsibility for yourself and not expecting the government to take care of you. It is about being free to live your life the way you want, as long as you do not hurt others. It is about having representatives who are honest and keep their word. It is about having an honest government who treats everyone fairly. It is about having a smaller government who spends its money wisely. Tea Party members meet to learn, to talk about the issues, to share information, and to stand up to the government. People join for many different reasons, and all people are welcome at a Tea Party. The Tea Party's work is not done. The government is still taking away our freedoms listed in the Bill of Rights and still breaking the laws of the Constitution. Doctors and scientists. Tea Party people stand up for what is right in their own professions. These are just a few of the doctors and scientists who have fought for you for many years. Jane Orient, M.D., of the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, has been working to protect your medical freedom for a long time. Arthur Robinson, Ph.D., has long fought dishonesty in science. J. Gordon Edwards, Ph.D., exposed the environmental scam of banning DDT. Special thanks to our own favorite doctor and patriot and narrator, Edward J. Harshman, M.D. There are doctors and scientists who fight constantly to be able to keep you healthy. Thank you, doctors and scientists. Farmers and law enforcement officers team up. Farmers fight for your right to have healthy food. Richard Mack is a multi-purpose hero. He has held one of the highest ranking local police positions called a sheriff and has fought to educate other law enforcement people that local officers have the right to tell the federal government no. In this picture, Richard Mack and two farmers fight for your right to have healthy raw milk with all of nature's best nutrients still whole and fresh. It's hard to imagine living in a country where we have to fight to have healthy milk. Thank you, farmers and law enforcement officers. Honest Teachers and Authors Charlotte Thompson Iserbay was President Reagan's senior policy advisor and is the author of The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, seen here with her assistant, Montana. John Taylor Gatto, school teacher and author of many books about education and history. There are teachers and authors who fight constantly for you to be treated respectfully and to provide you with honest education. Thank you, teachers and authors. Special thanks to our own computer genius, John Snow Pease. The Tea Party is unusual in that it is not only the men who are fighting. Many of those pushing for change are mothers. Parents are educating and involving their children. Every day, more people join the Tea Party, even children. Anyone who supports freedom and acts in the spirit of the early patriots can join. Some of the things you can do are to write letters to your senators, congressmen, and the president. Learn more about the Constitution and Bill of Rights. 
and support and vote for those who follow the Constitution. Everyone does what they can. Betsy Ross The Tea Party has thousands of groups across America. Each group does different things to help our country. If you want to become a member of the Tea Party and help make the government follow the Constitution, take the pledge on the next page. Pledge. I love America and promise to learn about American history and to defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Congratulations. You are now a member of the Tea Party. Welcome. Let's get to work. Tea Party Baby wants you to join the Tea Party. Join me!